is a parable where there was a man that gave up everything, sold everything he could so he could purchase the land. Because he found treasure there. He found treasure there. And so what did he do? He went and took that and hid it. He took off. And he got rid of everything, sold everything he had. So he could purchase. You know the man. His name is Jesus. And the land is the earth. And the treasure is us. It's you. 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 It's us. It's us. He was willing to give everything. And everyone in the house knows this. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The word saved there is rescue. Amen. Rescue. He rescued me over 46 and a half, 47 years ago. Amen. Me too. Hallelujah. That was the best decision I ever made. Except saying, would you marry me, honey? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you love him, say amen. amen. Every one of you, under the sound of my voice, I want to tell you right now. Every one of us, praise God, we have a good, good father. Yes, we do. He's Abba. He's Father. He's Papa. Uh, you've heard me say this many times. But I like my son's translation. He's daddy God. And to me, he's daddy God. Hallelujah. If you love him, say amen. amen. I don't want to wear yours. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. While I'm getting here, somebody testify. Oh, you mean you can do that in this church? Yeah. Yeah, you can testify. Testify of the goodness of the Lord. Anybody? Anybody? Yes, sir. Last Sunday we had a little better than expected turnout. We had about six couples there. I mean, six people there. So with Amen. with that and uh, and the Holy Ghost, uh, we had twelve people. So Amen. 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 Well, good. Amen. Praise God. They're over the nursery there, and uh, boy, they are doing a good job there. Nursing home. Nursing home. Excuse me. Nursing. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I tell you what, sounds like you're doing a pretty good job. Amen. Somebody else? I'm healed. Huh? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. We're going to give you a chance here in a little bit, if you fill up to it, testify. Anyone else want to testify? Uh oh. Excuse me, Miss Mary. I, I don't need that. Uh oh. I, don't need that. I was just going to say, I know it sounds silly, but. I have a my second toe here. It's 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 like this, and I have to have surgery on it up in my foot. And I have to be off my foot for three or four weeks. So uh, I told him I can't do it till Pete gets to where he can help take care of himself. You know. Anyway, this morning uh, because I haven't been able to wear my shoes or wear any kind of shoes except house shoes, as I was coming up the road, my foot was hurting so bad. And I was just so mad that I was hitting my steering wheel and I started screaming at God and saying, God, you told me that if I believe and, and I prayed that it would stop in Jesus' name, you could take care of this. Anyway, I didn't go around the corner good. My foot quit hurting. So. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Well, one more time. If you love him, say. Amen. 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 Praise God. One more. One more. It's going to be hard for me to get through this because it's still fresh on my heart, but I have a difficult relationship in my life, and I've been trying to share with her the love of God and that it doesn't mean that we can do whatever we want, and it doesn't mean that we can just live however we want to, and right. the Word says if we teach other people to break His commands that it'll be bad for us, so I've been trying to share all this with her, but God just keeps telling me, forgive her and love her, forgive her and love her, and I'm just like, man, this is really starting to weigh on me. It's really starting to hurt me. 
it's really starting to break me down and mess with my relationship with God. So I finally got to the root of everything and we worked it out and I talked to her and I just, I'm still struggling with some of it because it hurts so bad to, to just have to humble myself to that place in the, okay. with this person in my life. But man, I can just see the freedom. I can feel oh, it man. just coming and I know that he's doing exactly what he says. You, when he says that if you forgive others that he will forgive you oh, and I just feel so much bondage breaking off of me right now. I know that I'm still holding on to some stuff and I don't know what it is just yet. I know he'll reveal it to me. He's faithful to do so. But oh... Just love and forgive. That's what he called us to do, you know. Just walk like he walked. It doesn't matter what they've done to you. They put him up on a cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So just remember, if anybody's hurting you, they don't know what they're doing. And they need the love of God to show them otherwise. So Amen. that's it. Amen. What's that say, Pastor, 70 times 70? I was yeah. just thinking yeah. that. In a day. Amen. You yeah. know, uh, right now, you're operating like Peter. Lord, have been telling God, forgive this exactly. dude. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm just like, oh, okay. Amen. 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 It's okay. But everybody, you will say this with me. God's, God's grace, grace. 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 is sufficient. He's more than enough. How many times have you forgiven us? Exactly. Right. Wow. Yes. Turn it around that way. That's what he And you look at it and go. Oh, man, that's, that's quite a bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be a mess up, but uh, how many know you feel like sometimes you're a mess up? Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, glory. It's good to have everyone here this morning. And with it being, well, when I woke up, it was 31 degrees. So uh, they said 28, but uh, when I asked Google, Google was letting me know it's 31. I don't know what it is out there now, but I do want to say this to y'all. Very sweet of y'all to come this morning. Thank you so much for being here. And just, I trust that uh, even though we're having to make a few a little adjustments here yeah. with the worship and a few things, we're going to later on get back together and kind of regroup some stuff. And uh, and uh, but I do appreciate Miss Kathy and Brother Kenneth and them doing all this. Wasn't that all right? Amen. 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 That's sweet. Amen. That's very sweet of them. And I'll tell you what, bless their heart. They may not want me to say this, but. Uh, they have just been so awesome, and uh, they brought meals every night, I think. Just every night. Wow. And chili last night, boy, it tasted like Wendy's almost, didn't it? Or more. Amen. So it was all good. We are so appreciative. Thank you, and thank you guys, each and every one of you that are praying for us. And um, I know some of you don't really know what all is going on at this moment, but um, anyhow, uh, we're getting through it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you don't mind, somebody say, I, I've already had you say it on how many times, but I guess to where I'm going to go here with it, it'll help me. God's love. God's love. Just if you will, God's love. God's love. God's love. God's love and his word bonds together and it unites inside of us. And it ignites in us, it creates in us that we are Christian. We're born again. We're children of God. Amen. We're sons and daughters of God. Amen. 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 And with God's love and his word, faith operates and it works. Amen. Amen. How many agree with that? Amen. 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 So God's word and his love combines together because if there's no love there, faith can't work. How many agree with that? It can't. Can't agree. It, it won't work. Right. You have to have that, and you have to do exactly what Sister, uh, 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 what she was trying to say. Well, like she was trying to say that she don't want to deal with this. You don't have to hold this in her heart. Amen. Okay. And how many knows that if you have an all or an offense or whatever, and you can't, you can't have that, right? right. You can't operate in faith the way you really want to because of it. Amen. Yeah. Right. It hinders your walk. It hinders your like relationship with the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm going to share with you a little bit. And I'd like for, if you will, very boldly, if you will, say this with me. Doubt. Doubt. Doubt, Doubt and fear. Doubt and fear. Doubt, the word doubt, should never come out of the mouth of a Christian. No. Near one of us. No. We shouldn't say it. No. I've been doing a little bit of studying off and on, and then this morning, early. I got up and I started pondering and meditating on this. 
And it just the Lord just kind of giving me some divine direction on it. And uh, I'm just trusting that I can share a little bit of this here. And just uh, afterwards, we can share a little bit of what's going on with us. And again, we want to say thank you very much for agreeing and believing with us. Amen. How many knows that doubt is a thief of God's greater blessing? Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Amen. Doubt is a thief of God's greater blessing. It will hinder you and I in our walk in our life. But as I said while well ago, we know how faith comes. It comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. Amen. And again, as our sister was saying a while ago, our walk in our life needs to be sincere and pure toward him. Amen. In all that we do. Right? I want you, if you will, take a moment. Go with me to the book of Matthew 14. When you get over there, say hallelujah. Matthew 14. We're going to look at the 22nd verse down to the 31st verse. Praise God. We're going to trust the Holy Spirit just lead us and guide us, direct us. And uh, we're going to just enjoy what God's doing. Amen? Amen. All right. If you're there, say hallelujah. Praise God. You want me to wait? I can wait a little bit longer. I'm here in paper. All right. Here we go. And straightway Jesus contrived his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side. While he sent, he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them. Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said to him, If it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boasting, and he was afraid, and began to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Now I gotta pause here for a moment and I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little bit of, 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 of human. Can I say that? How many has ever stepped out of a water and walked on water? Now, isn't there 12 disciples in the boat? But at least there was one that wanted to come see him. Wanted to walk out there, right? So, there's not a man on the face of this earth except Peter that's walked on the water. I don't know how many steps he took, but he took some, amen? But at least he was like, Lord, if that you let me come. And how many know Peter? Boy, he's just that way, isn't he? He's a little crap, he's something else. Matter of fact, he's kind of like a lot of us, Amen. Or maybe we're kind of like a lot of him. Amen? Right. But here he is. He's the one that was willing to step out there. Right. And then when he got out there, he got his eyes off of Jesus and started looking Amen. and seeing the waves, the wind and going on. And the next thing you know, he's going down. And then he does what? A lot about what you and I would do. Cry out to him and say, Lord, help! <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Let me read this to you. Um... I just want to bring some human in there because really when it comes down to it, at least out of the 12, Peter was willing to step out there and uh, it doesn't say how far he got. He might have got two or three steps for all I know or more. It doesn't say that. But at least he was willing. Amen? He was willing to get out there and do it. Here's a statement I'd like for you to uh, hear. In this story... Jesus sent his disciples across the sea 
while he went up to a mountain to pray. In the fourth watch of the night between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock the next morning, the disciples saw Jesus walking toward them on the water, thinking that, it was seeing, that they were seeing a ghost. They cried out with fear. Jesus spoke, Jesus spoke to them, and he said, It is I, be not afraid. <laughs> Peter shouted, Lord, if, it really you, if it's really you, bid me to come to you. And Jesus answered with one word, Come. Peter started out in faith. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he did just fine. But when he took his eyes off of Jesus and looked at the circumstance around him and the wind whipping and the sea about him because fear had gripped him and he began to sink. And then he said, Lord, save me. He cried out and said, Lord, save me. And Jesus took Peter's hand, led him back into the boat, rebuked him with the word, O thou of little faith, wherefore... Didst thou doubt? Listen to this. Faith is acting on the word of God. As long as Peter acted on Jesus' word to him, he was all right. But when he began to doubt, when he began to be afraid and quickly acted on the words of, and quit acting on the words of Jesus, he began to sin. Jesus did not intend for Peter to sink. He meant for Peter to walk back to the ship with him. Yeah. Doubt. Somebody say doubt. Doubt, doubt robbed Peter of the blessing. Yeah. Doubt and fear go hand in hand. How many agree with that? I'm going to say it again. Doubt and fear go hand to hand. But faith and love also goes hand to hand. In hand. Yes. Isn't that what Pastor said a while ago? <coughs> Praise God for His love and His Word which gives us that faith. Because without that love, our faith is not going to operate. Amen? Yes. Amen. Perfect love casts out all fear. 1 John 4, 18. Somebody, if you will, say it would be perfect love. Perfect, perfect love. Casts out yes. all, all fear. fear. All anxiety. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. Now another statement here. In, uh, let's see. Let me get back over here real quick. It says this here. Faith is measured by our confession. Our usefulness in the Lord is measured by our confession. He says, <laughs> we become what? We say by the word that we speak out of our mouth. What we speak out of our mouth, what we say with our mouth, what we confess with our mouth, whether for good or bad, how many knows is still coming? If we're going to speak bad, it's coming. If we're going to speak good, it's coming. Hello? Now, religion says this here. Watch it now. Remember, boy. Randy, you remember, boy, whatsoever man sow, that shall he reap. When I got saved, born again, I'd get around a bunch of religious people. They'd use that scripture so much, and then all they would emphasize on is all the bad stuff I did. Uh -huh. yeah. But you realize that whatsoever man sow, even in good, that shall he reap. Uh -huh. The goodness of God. Yeah. But most people, I hate to say it, they focus, that's right, love, they focus on the bad. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, what little bitty thing you did wrong or whatever, watch it, watch it. Man, well, you better be careful, you know. You don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Anyhow, all right. Then it says this here. There is a confession of our faith and a confession of our lips. And when these two harmonize, isn't that beautiful? We become mighty in our prayer life. How many agree with that? Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful, isn't it? If you love him, say amen. Amen. All right, glory to God. Now, let's do this here. 
Hang on, hang on just a second. Let me find my spot where I was at. Yes, 83. <coughs> I love this statement here. It says this. A young man once told me he never was defeated until he confessed that he was. Yeah. Mm. This is take this for Brother Kenneth Hagin. He's our spiritual father. I'll tell you what, I really enjoy some of his comments here. But listen to this here. One Baptist minister put it this way. You say you could not. And the moment you said it, you were defeated. Baptist minister. You say you did not, excuse me, you say you did not have faith. And doubt rose up like a giant and bound you. You are in prison with your own words. How many agree with that? Oh, yeah. You and I are in prison with your own words. You talk failure, and failure holds you in bondage. Mm -hmm. Defeat and failure do not belong to God's child. Belong to the child of God. Right. Amen? Right. God never made, listen to this here. Y'all need to tattoo this in your heart, your soul, your mind, your intellect. Amen. He says here, God never made a failure. No, He didn't. Not at all. Mm -hmm. How many in life has felt like you have been a failure? Yeah. Yeah. Majority of us? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. God, you know, I used to sit there, I used to do this all the time. You say this all the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's like one day the Lord just said, Would you quit saying that? Yeah. And then the light went on. And so I don't say it anymore. I just say, Excuse me, I apologize. But you know what? God never made you jump. And you're not sorry because Christ lives in you. Amen. 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 And he's saying here, God didn't make any failures. You're not a failure. You're not a misfit. You're not just like, well, I'm just making up space here. Or just, you know, I really don't understand why I'm even here. But I'm here. Hello? You're here for a purpose, brother. You're here for a purpose, sister. We are here for a reason. Amen. I was chosen. Huh? I was chosen. You were chosen. Thank you, brother. You were chosen. Absolutely. Praise God. So, let's see here. I like this part. I love this. God never made a failure. God made us new creatures. We are not born of the will of flesh. Did you hear that? It says here, we are not born of the will of flesh or the will of man but of the will of God. We are created in Christ Jesus. Amen. Failure. Oh, man. Failure or man-made. They are made by wrong believing and wrong thinking. How many times have you heard pastors say, stinking thinking? <laughs> stinking thinking will get you and I in trouble. Amen? Amen? We don't want to do that. We taught on soul, the soulless part of us. And we taught about our spirit and our soul man. Amen. Remember that in our body. And we have to do something. And that is we need to what? Renew the soul, the mind, the intellect. Implant the word of God into our souls, our minds, our intellect. To renew it. Remember Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, and, and pleasant. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. They are made by wrong believing and wrong thinking. Amen. 1 John 4.4. 4. 1 John 4.4 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let me do it again. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Learn to trust the greater one who is in you. He is mightier than anything in the world. How many agree with that? Amen. God created the universe with words. How many believe that? We all know that, don't we? Amen. God created the universe with words. Words filled with faith are the most powerful thing on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. How many agree with that? Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. The key to God kind of faith is believing with the heart and confessing with the mouth. Our lips came, excuse me, our lips can make us a millionaire. Amen. We could be a prosperous person or we could be poor. It's up to you and me. Our lips can make us victorious or keep us in captive. Amen. We can fill our words with faith or we can fill them with doubt. We can fill our words with love that will melt the coldest heart. That's right. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. 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 The coldest heart, praise God. Or we can fill them with hate and poison. We can fill our words with love that will help to discourage and break the broken heart. And with that with faith, it will stir heaven. We can make our words breathe the very atmosphere of heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Isn't that beautiful? How many ever heard this one here? There's just some people you've met in your walk in life over the years that... Uh, you ever met somebody that when he, when they walked in the room it seemed like everything went off? It just it just got dark. You know, like Yeah. Hello? What'd you say? All I said was yeah. Oh. Some people all they are they're very negative. Right. About everything. Everything. And it's like, you know, all of a sudden when they stepped in, the lights went out. And all they do is just, you know, they're just Paranoid and everything they say or do. Amen? Hello? <laughs> you and I can change the atmosphere. Amen. We can Amen. start it off for in the first thing in the morning. Amen. We can look in the mirror and say, Man, you're a handsome dude. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus lives in me. Praise God. And he's the one that made a difference in me. Amen. And I have life in him. Amen. And I have a choice that I can live the life. And live it happy throughout this day. Or I have a choice I can. It's up to you and me. Right? right. Who was it while ago said something about, you know. No, it was Miss Kathy when she was reading. Clip of God. You know what? There's the promises. There's things there. But God can't literally control and make you do it. No. You have to do what? You have to correspond to work with him. So he can work with you. Amen. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit is for? We just expect God to just do it all. Amen. Amen. And He needs our help. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I said? God needs our help. Really? Yes. You and I are the church. We're the vessel. We're the church, praise God. And He works through you and me to get His job done. Isn't that beautiful? So uh, you could say, you're a pretty special guy, you know. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You were so special that he gave his life. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think that's pretty cool. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Where am I at here? Our faith will never rise. Listen to this here. Our faith will never rise above words of our lips. Just told the woman. Listen to this here. I love this. Above the words of our lips or the above of the words of our confession. Here's one. Jesus told the woman with an issue of blood that her faith has made her whole. Yes, he did. Her faith has made her whole. Man. Thoughts. Here's another thought. Let me, can I set that away? <clears throat> Thoughts may come and they may proceed to stay. But if we refuse to put those thoughts into words, they are dead unborn. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Amen. So you and I have power in us through the Holy Spirit that will help us. Then when we are attacking mentally, emotionally, whatever, we can literally in the middle of it stop and do like Sister Mary. God, you say it. Amen. When she got around the curve, what happened? Right. What are you doing? You're persistent. You're speaking it. Yes. You're believing it, praise God. In spite of it, amen? amen? You're standing. Let me tell you something. This boy, with my job, thank you, Lord, for love. Oh, thank you for my job. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. 
But there are challenges. There are so many different things and so much on that on my iPad that I have to remember. Thank the Holy Spirit. You know? And there are moments that he seemed like it mentally can get so frustrating, you know? And I have to literally just stop. Stop my word for a moment and say, okay. Just just rethink this. Just just take it easy. Because in my mind, I'm going through the day, and if I don't see a certain patient here, and this one, and that one, and this one, then it postpones, and it stretches out the day, and it makes it longer, and then I'm working longer in the afternoon or night. And so my mind, so I stop, and I go, no, I'm just going to stay steady. I'm just going to stay with it, and I'm going to trust you, Holy Spirit, to help me. And there are moments he gives me this unique little things he'll remind me or tell me, and I go, yes. I feel like a little kid sometimes. I'm like, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for helping me there. I thought, I mean, I forgot about it, you know? Amen. Amen. He's good. He will even help you on your job. Amen. Amen. He will. He's a good, good daddy. Amen. 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 Oh, my goodness. Somebody give the Lord a big shout, will you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Brother Rick, you mean we can do that in this church? Yes. <laughs> Hello. How many loves the Dallas Cowboys? Yes. Uh, how many loves Texan? Yeah. Which, yeah. which our team lost yesterday. But yeah. uh, when you go and watch the Rockets or one of your favorite teams, or when you watch your granddaughter play basketball, or your son play football, what are you going to do? I wish you'd hurry up and get ready. No, you're not. No, you're not. No. You're going to be over there getting right into it. Amen. Amen. How much more should we do that for the glory of God? Amen. Right. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. I'm going to say this again. You and I are very special. We are very, very special. You are a special kind of person. And God created you so unique. Amen. Amen. Think about your God. Your God created the heavens and the earth, and He took stars and shaped them threw them up there and even named every one and humanity can't even number how many they are and he knows when they fall I think he's got your phone number I think he's got your social security number I think he's got your address I think well some may have less hair than more but I believe he knows exactly how many we have amen I won't mention no names but anyhow Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lord, I was saying that graceful. I was saying that graceful. I like to keep my hair too. <laughs> if you love him, say amen. Amen. Second Timothy, I believe it is, 1 7. Second Timothy 1 7. Second Timothy, I believe it is, one seven. Here we go. Yes, it is. If you're there, say amen. 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 For God, somebody say my daddy. My daddy. For God, my father, my daddy, has not, somebody boldly say this with me, has not, has not given not. us the it's spirit it. of fear. But a power and love and of a sound mind. Amen. He has given you and I love, power, and of a sound mind. Even in a chaotic, out control day, the Lord is still God. He's still our Father. He's still in the midst of it. Amen. You know this scripture right here that I had you guys to do. I, I had you guys to quote it with me. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and doubt not my love for you. For you. When Gail and I went to the Urchin Center and they took her go do a scan and take x-rays, I was in her room speaking and I was, I was saying that scripture. His love, His love, His love. 
And you know, I know I was saying a while ago, his love is word works together with faith, but also his love casts out all fear. That's right. All anxiety. And you know what? We didn't know exactly what was going on. Sister Gayla at Walmart, she took this comforter that she found at Walmart. It was on sale. She thought, man, this is good and it's beautiful. And she took the comforter and she threw it upon the, on the, on the truck. And she picked up buckets of sugar. She picked up different stuff. But apparently, the way she threw it up, well, she yeah, hit her knees and she, she broke her um, L1. It's an old injury. No, the way, that's not. No, that's no. not the one that God healed. God it's the healed fifth one. Fifth that was crushed. Right. L1 wasn't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so the way apparently she threw that up there, it popped. They say it's 60 to 70 percent cracked, broke. And then they came in and told us that everything else was pretty good, but she had COPD. And I rebuked that in Jesus' name, and I began to tell the doctors what we've been told before. That Sister Gala, bless her heart, when our son David was born, she had a blood clot. And she stayed in the hospital, her and David, for 28 days. There's a scar there. She had a wreck, and the airbag popped her, hit her in the chest. She went to the elementary cafeteria. There's a kid come running out the door, and the door popped, hit, hit her in the lungs. Mm. And there, we, we had a few other things that had recurring happen to her. When we went to Dallas, Texas, to Destiny, supernaturally, when we went there, we was in worship, and and God began to minister to people out just outside Wonders River, all of miracles. All of a sudden, she did it. She come around to the right side, and there was a woman there. And I don't, you know, I don't usually say this, but I'll go and say it here. I, I mean, I don't usually say this, but I'll say it. Uh, she was a very black, beautiful lady. And she was right there beside her, just praying over her. And people just laying out different places all over. And Sister Gayla, she said, well, they hey. Had, they had you with That's why I'm saying that. Yeah. Ago. Back then, they had mentioned the same thing again. Anyhow, she was laying there. And when we got through, she got up to go sit down. She leaned over, looked at me. She said, who blew in my mouth? I said, what? She said, did that woman put her lip over me and breathe in me? I went, nope. She said, somebody breathed in me. Yeah. Supernaturally, the Lord breathed into her lungs and God tremendously healed her. Amen. Wow. My wife could not be with our son at the time that spoke and our daughter in a car with them. No way. If there was smoke in the car, she couldn't sit in it. She couldn't do it at the time. It was that severe to her. And um, through it, God supernaturally healed her. And she was around people that could smoke or whatever. You know what I mean? She did beautiful, did awesome. But when we had the heart procedure done, the doctor did tell her that there will be moments the heart may feel like it's going to jump and just start you know, racing. But it will just come right down. And every once in a while, you'll see her go... And that's part of that part that she's, you know, done over the period of time. She has no sign, no sign that we read of COPD. But they're saying I did. And that they're saying, I said, sir, I even asked him, I said, sir, I said, what dimension, what degree is, uh, is it? And he said, it just shows that she has COPD. Well, he got off of this and he started talking about her back. And then the nurse came in and she started talking about her back. I'm thinking, Lord, I would think you're talking about the COPD too. You know? They never really mentioned it again. Gave us three cards for three different doctors that were specialists. And uh, we got an appointment to go see Dr. Uh, Bledsoe Thursday. And after that, he's going to give us a form, uh, a um, referral, yeah. so we can go to see a spine spinal uh, specialist and get this checked out. But um, we've got some other things that we've been, she's been looking at doing. Um, but I need to make a bold statement here, or I will give the mic and let her do it. 
Sunday. Oh, Sunday, I, this all happened Thursday before last. But I want to I wanna say something back in, I think it was, I can't remember, Nita, if it was July or August, because Cindy was still mm -hmm. here. But anyway, I fell on the steps of our bakery. I passed mm -hmm. out, and I fell on my back. Yeah. I fell, I knew my back was hurt then. I knew it because ever after that, I was hurting in my back, but not as severe as I have been hurting. And so anyway, they went and they said, okay, we think you got a, uh, either an ulcer or you got something, you was dehydrated. So to make a long story short, when I did what I did last Thursday, or Thursday before last, I felt it. I felt something, it, 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 I felt it. And when I hit my knees in Walmart parking lot, I was praying to God, I said, God help me get up. I was in my truck. And God helped me. I literally crawled up to pull myself up to get into the truck, and I went home. And by the time I got home, I was in a lot of pain. Well, that Sunday, which was the last Sunday, I came. I, I wasn't going to come because I was in a lot of pain, but I said, you know what, Devil, you're not going to stop me. I'm going to church. And so I came, and of course, we didn't have any music or anything, and I thought, I'm going to get up there, and I'm going to worship. And I did, and I'm telling y'all, y'all, I was hurting so bad. It was hurting so bad. And y'all, we started singing Hallelujah. That last song, we started singing. And y'all, I would never lie. God, you know my heart. I would never lie about a touch of God. But I'm telling you, God touched me last Sunday morning. He touched my back. I felt like it wasn't hot. It wasn't heat. It was like a biofreeze. Like that, that, that real cold almost. Like somebody just put an ice on my back. And I knew God had touched me. Well, we left. I mean, I, I was excited. I was like, God, thank you, thank you. Went to eat? I, we went to eat. I was fine. I, I was just, it was great. And then I, Monday, Monday afternoon, I started feeling pain in my back again. And so anyway, by Monday night, I was screaming, y'all. It was so bad. It was horrible. And I told him, I said, if I don't get relief of this, I'm going to the hospital. God, it's not, I don't trust you, but I can't handle this pain, y'all. It was literally, it hurt almost as bad as whenever my back was crushed. But what, what I want to say is this. I know God touched me right there. I've been touched. I've been healed. And I reminded God yesterday, or day for yesterday, when I was in my prayer time, I said, God, You've touched me so many times. God, you have proved yourself to me. God don't have to prove nothing to me. I know who he is, and I know who I am in him. And I know that I know that I know that I know that God has healed me. I just, I just got to trust him, and I know it. And so by confession of my faith, even as I am saved, I am healed. This is just a symptom. It's just a... A setback yeah. for a comeback. So that's what I'm believing. That's where I'm standing. Have I been in pain? Yes, I have. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, it has no right to be there. Because I'm healed. And that's what I believe with all my heart. So that said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and I'm going to see this doctor and I'm going to see this fine specialist. But it's not that I don't believe I'm just trusting God sure. every day, Amen. every minute, every hour and every second that he is doing what he said he would do in Isaiah 53 and 5. What he did, not what he was going to do, what he did. And I believe with all my heart that I'm healed and I'm standing on that. And I, I don't want anything different. See it? I am healed. I am healed. That's, that's just the long of it and, and the short of it. Amen. If you love him, say amen. 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 Sister Gayla and I, can we bring a little humor in this? We can laugh now.
I don't want to keep you too much later. I mean late. But when I left there, they gave her this very strong medicine. Oh, it was stronger than it was stronger than morphine. Actually, so they they only give it while you're there. We were there another hour and a half or whatever it was too. Oh, Felt like well, it was pretty well, much all day. To me to try to get me out of pain because I And they gave her yeah, get her out. And they gave her something for nauseaness. And uh, they gave her muscle relaxer. Amen? Mm -hmm. So they did all that, right? We went through all this. Bless her heart. They had to pin her, get her in there, get x-ray and all this. When we left, oh boy, you okay me telling this? When we left. Not one part of it. <laughs> you know the guy works through the doctors. Too. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor uh, uh, Luke was a physician. Yeah. But anyhow, I we. Tell him I, lost, I, lost my, I lost my bridge. Y'all vomiting all over the place. A bridge came out. We we went got up this side of Cleveland. I know, guys. I don't mean keep y'all, but again. We got up toward Cleveland, and she's like, baby, I got, I got, I'm going to throw up, I'm going to up. She can't stand to throw up. I don't tell you. So I pull over, she gets, I open the door, she's going at it. I get a little mouth, I get something, I'm trying to clean her mouth and everything. We get settled, we head off. We get to Brookshire's, because we're going to go get a prescription, right? We get in the parking lot, she said, honey, I'm going to open the door, open the door, she threw up again. Oh, man, I went into uh, Brookshire's. They didn't have it there. I was like, Walmart, I guess. So I went over to Walmart in the parking lot. I'm like, okay. I get out of the car. I open the door. She's going at him. While we're there, all of a sudden, there went her. My bridge. Her bridge just went. Boom. I said, oh, you're dead. She said, I don't care. <laughs> One time she was doing this here. She was like. <laughs> Bye. My nose is too. I, I don't have another one. Oh <laughs> Anyhow, I took her little teeth, bless her heart, and I pour Sprite over, trying to clean it real good, you know. I said, babe, hang on. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get. Yeah, our... that's love. So on, when I got through, I called. And I said, ma'am, I said, did y'all send the prescriptions to Walmart? He said, yes, sir, Porter. I went, Porter. Porter. Like, sir, could you call Porter at Walmart and have them to. And I thought, huh? I said, yes, ma'am, I would. I'm in the parking lot of here in Walmart. So I did. They did. So I went in and I got it. Got some other stuff and everything. We get in the car. I said, okay, babe, you okay? And we get, find out she's all right. She's leaning back. She's half with me, you know, back and forth. We get up. I said, I got to make one more stop. So I stop at the Circle K to get gas. I'm getting gas, and at one I get through getting gas, I get ready, and I'm gonna go out about that time. She went, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> open the door. Now <laughs> that we get through all that, I get her home. Get up close to the car, I mean up to the house there, and I get her, and we go inside, and she's like, you know. She really knew. She what never left caught. She knew about what everything, but she would just Looney, you know, a little, uh, uh, like a oh, loony. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, get her in the recliner. She's over there. You're not crazy. I didn't say you were crazy. <laughs> she gets in there in the car. I mean, in the recliner. She's laying back there. She's just, she's out. And I'm cleaning. I'm putting stuff up quick as I can. About 30, 40 minutes, she looks up. And she goes, hon? I went, yeah? She says, what you doing? I said, uh, I'm cleaning and putting stuff up. She's like, Oh, okay. I said, uh, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> well, you know, the last time was your fault. The gas, gas fumes got in the car. That right. Made sense. <laughs> what? Right. Gas fumes? I, I missed that. It's slow. Larry. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, the gas fumes got in the car. That's what made it go up the last time. This year don't catch it. So that's your fault. <laughs> now you got everybody thinking, oh, they're... <laughs> aren't you glad we can have fun in our church? Amen. So you know, I brought this out this morning, that all of us are learning and growing. And Sister Gate and I, we are going to speak his word 